Sam thought something was terribly wrong with him. He was an attorney and he was certainly used to being stressed, and yet he found himself shaking and trembling and described feeling this internal vibration that hung on for days. You may be able to relate to what Sam described. I call it the anxiety dance. And we can thank our ancestors because this kinetic energy helped them to survive. Now, they needed this immediate body response, this fight or flight response to survive the wild because they had to deal with snakes and tigers and other clansmen attacking them by surprise. So imagine how fast a body response has to be in, to be effective for a surprise attack. Most of us don't have much need for that anymore, but it's a part of us and we have to learn to work with our anxiety and work with our fight or flight response. Common symptoms triggered by your sympathetic nervous system or your fight or flight response include an adrenaline spike where our adrenal glands release adrenaline into our bloodstream to give us that energy to run or fight. And this is primarily what leads to tremors and shaking. Now, breath rate changes where rapid breathing takes more oxygen to power up our muscles, but it can feel like you're you know, not getting enough air in racing heart, where our heart pumps rapidly to get more blood to our muscles to prepare for running or fighting. Vision changes, where our eyes dilate due to the adrenaline and to focus on a potential threat. Sweating, where the body wants to keep us cool during an energy spurt. Muscle tension, as our whole body is preparing for this surge of activity. And this can also lead to the side effect of trembling and shaking. And dry mouth and digestion issues, of course, because the stress response sends blood to our muscles and digestion is just turned off. So there's no need for digestion if you're running for your life. You know, and part of the survival mechanism includes keeping you awake when stressed. Now, Sam understood his body stress response. It made sense to him, but he was frustrated when the symptoms interrupted his sleep. So I asked Sam if he understood that frustration also activates the stress response. Frustration, annoyance, impatience, anger, they all activate the same fear response uh, as stress and anxiety. You know, uh, part of Sam's job was performing in his role as an attorney. Now, attorneys can really go at it during depositions and court cases, but then they shut it off when they leave the courtroom. I'm not so sure that the stress response in Sam's case was shut off when he arrived home in the evenings. The truth is that your brain is aware of your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. It hears what you're saying and the tone that you're using throughout the day. For those people that have stressful jobs or are in stressful environments, you need to balance that stress load with a stress management routine. Now, what that routine looks like depends, of course, on what you enjoy and what works for you. Now, it might include things like taking a walk in nature, having soothing conversations, playing with your dogs, doing yoga, maybe mindful meditation, breathing exercises, or working out. I'll leave you a stress management playlist in the description below to help you create your own routine. We're all different. We all enjoy different activities to manage our daily stress. Now, what I explained to Sam is that instead of being worried or concerned about his trembling and shaking and vibrating, it was so much better to welcome his body movements and sensations. Yes, it might disrupt your sleep sometimes, but being frustrated or worried about it is only going to keep the fear center of your brain activated longer. You want to do the opposite to calm down that fear center, welcoming, allowing the symptoms to stay for as long as they wish is how you calm down your brain. Yes, you could do breathing exercises and other techniques in that moment to activate your parasympathetic nervous system to calm your body, but using those techniques in that moment may feel good, it may give you some temporary relief, but it only perpetuates the anxiety cycle in the long run. Responding in the moment with a technique to avoid feeling anxious 
sends a message to your brain that you don't want the anxiety symptoms. And then your brain will learn to become more reactive to those very symptoms because it's going to begin to fear anxiety sensations. This is why we practice stress management as a scheduled routine and practice it in the same way that you practice any routine, you know, like brushing your teeth. Think of stress during your day to be on one side of the scale and then the anxiety and the stress management practices, good quality sleep, good nutrition is on the other side. There is no perfection here. You just begin with some kind of regular practice and then see how you feel. Until next time, I'll see you in session. Take care. Bye-bye.